Why then do these inequalities persist? Accounts of gender inequality in journalism tend to focus around two broad sets of issues, motherhood and newsroom culture. Let's look at each in turn. Motherhood is often used as the main explanation for the underrepresentation of women in journalism, particularly in senior roles. Just as women would be moving up into these roles, the argument goes, they have children and their career trajectory changes. This argument is sometimes framed sympathetically, perhaps even as a critique of the long hours and drop everything to get the story culture of news reporting. Journalism can be framed as a hostile environment for women with children. There is, after all, no childcare for women who need to be at the news desk from 5am or getting on a plane at a moment's notice. But sometimes the argument has a slightly blaming tone, almost as though women have ruled themselves out by making the decision to have children. Women journalists with children can all too easily find themselves presented as less committed. These arguments are heard widely, but are rarely targeted at men. Men are not asked who's looking after their children. More importantly, in planning their careers, they rarely have to make sacrifices in the ways demanded of women. Here's Glenda Cooper talking about how her own career changed when she became a mother. I was a journalist. I was working um, both as a, you know, a parachute feature writer, so I was travelling all around the world, and then I was, um, became a features editor, which involved working very long hours, you know, 8.30 in the morning till probably 9 o'clock at night. And so what did I do when I had children? I did that classic thing. Um, I went freelance, and I looked for other uh, possible you know, careers, which is why I ended up teaching journalism. Though. Um, and I think it's, it's really common. You see this kind of disappearance from the newsroom, and I hated it. How do we change cultures? It's by having women in senior positions. That's what I wanted to see, and then I couldn't fulfil that myself because I couldn't see how I could make it work. You know, even with you know, the way that journalism is changing, you know, there are still you know, too many women who can't realise how they can make it work as a full-time journalist and sort of manage having kids as well. There is, as many have argued, a motherhood penalty in journalism and alongside it a fatherhood premium. So not only do women fare worse when they become mothers, but fathers actually get a career boost. Yet the reality is that most women in journalism are not mothers, whether by choice or precisely because of the difficulty of combining motherhood with a successful journalistic career. Motherhood may have become a politically palatable or expedient way of accounting for gender inequality in the profession, but perhaps it hides a deeper sexism. The other set of issues that have preoccupied analysts trying to understand persistent inequalities in journalism look at sexism in the newsroom, examining the tendency for male editors to appoint in their own image, laddish newsroom cultures, sexism and, more recently, misogyny. Newsrooms have been discussed as hegemonic masculine workplace cultures with strongly gendered hierarchies. Louise North's extensive analysis of the experiences of 577 female journalists found them referring to entrenched male privilege, which favours men and marginalises women, taking their aspirations and ambitions less seriously. I think the culture favours men, said one of her respondents. Another contended, in my experience, women's ambitions aren't heard as clearly as men's, nor seem to be taken as seriously. Many others simply said, it's a men's club. But how can we unpack this widely shared sense? What makes journalism apparently such a men's club? Research points to several different features of this. Some newsrooms, notably but not exclusively those of the tabloids, have historically been characterised by a culture of hard drinking, lewd jokes and consumption of pornography that alienates and antagonises some female recruits. In the late 1990s, Lisbeth van Zonen documented some of the initiation rites that females in the newsroom were expected to undergo, proving they can take it and be one of the lads. It's tempting to believe that in the 21st century, newsrooms have moved on, 
and this is certainly the case in some organisations. But progress is uneven. Glenda Cooper tells us about her experiences in newsrooms. I think the thing for women when they go into a newsroom is that if you go into a newsroom when you're a young woman, it can seem quite a hospitable place in some ways because a lot of women do very well early on in their career. We see a lot of women going into the newsrooms and, you know, it's an exciting job, you're young, you're like sort of, you're doing uh, the kind of job that no one else is doing. And so what I think is interesting is obviously when I was working in both mid-market and quality, you know, the kind of things you talk about, the banter, the kind of the drinking, the competitiveness was all there. But you kind of absorb that as a young woman, I think. And when you really come up against it, when you realise that um, these are difficult places to be, is when you're that bit older, when you realise that there are not the women in senior management um, positions, you realise that maybe you're not earning as much as uh, men, and you kind of see them go past you. And I think that was what uh, really struck me. Um, it's easy to talk, as I say, about, I mean, when I was starting off um, in my first job, there was literally someone who would go out at lunchtime, who'd come back and put his head on the laptop and go to sleep, because that was the culture of the time. And this is a very nice quality newspaper. I'm saying this is, I was not at a red top. Sometimes I think it's a more subtle uh, parts of a newsroom that can be more difficult when we're thinking about gender than the kind of the more obvious, you know, sort of laddish behaviours, which I think have probably uh, changed, at least from when I started, or at least are not seen as acceptable as they once were. Humour or banter plays a key role in this reinforcement of inequality. Sometimes women join in trying to be one of the lads. Joking could take on a competitive quality, as one of North's interviewees describes, with everyone trying to speak over and outdo the others to generate a withering put-down or a witty punchline. Sometimes women are told to toughen up or give as good as they get. Ellen E. Jones talked to us about her career and what she likes about newsroom culture, but she also talks about a sexist texture. It's more in the general sexist texture of media as a whole that um, can actually, although it seems like this big amorphous thing, can have I found can be quite personally upsetting. And, and so, for instance, um, I worked at a men's magazine when I first graduated from um, journalism college, and. Um, uh, and the, the reason I chose to work at a men's magazine was the kind of internalised sexism in that I knew that I wouldn't be able to write about the things that interested me, which were kind of film and politics and just, you know, that kind of stuff at a women's magazine, because it seemed to me that they were all about eyeshadow and orgasms, and if I wanted to write about that other stuff, I would have to go to a men's magazine. So I did. And I got to write about stuff that I was interested in, which was great. But there was also this sort of just everyday sexism to borrow a phrase that that like dismissal of women so i remember one thing that stuck in my mind was um they had like an interview with a big footballer i can't remember what his name was but he wasn't a particularly bright footballer um and they'd asked him about the israeli palestinian conflict and his thoughts on you know whatever the the hot political topic of the day was and then they also had an interview with nigella lawson who is you know i a big favourite of mine. I think she's an incredibly intelligent, interesting woman. And the pull quote on that feature was was like, "How do you feel about wearing stockings and suspenders, or do you enjoy wearing stockings and suspenders, or something?" And I was just, and I, I mean, saying it now, it sounds incredibly cringe. But part the worst thing about this story for me is remembering how I felt at the time, which is that it wasn't actually that outrageous, and it was just, it was just like, it was more of a hmm moment rather than a, you know, <laughs> and it was only a slow build of several moments, many, many moments like that that I started to think, actually, this is impacting my self-esteem. It's making me feel that as a woman, I have less to offer the world and the world of journalism than as a man. And then eventually I ended up leaving that magazine. Although I have to say, I worked with lots of great journalists there, lots of great male journalists. I don't think they were, they were even less conscious of this, obviously, than I was. But that doesn't mean it wasn't happening, it was happening. There are also forms of outright sexism in which women are simply judged more harshly than men. A recent example has been seen in sexist criticism of The Guardian newspaper's first female editor, Catherine Viner, which accused her of making the paper more feminised. It's worth highlighting Viner's spirited response, written under the topic, 
Editing while female. Let's turn to the issue of sexual harassment. The Me Too movement has brought the issue onto news agendas across the world. From the outset, media and creative industries were at the forefront of allegations and scandals about harassment, bullying and even sexual assault. Journalism has a paradoxical role here in that it's played a significant part in getting stories told, but at the same time its own cultures offer some of the worst examples. What's striking about sexual harassment in journalism is its routine nature, its everydayness. It's something that runs through the industry. Research on female journalists finds that a majority have experienced some form of sexual harassment. Particular features of a reporter's life, such as news gathering alone, being reliant on a source for a story, and working in domains that themselves tend to be male-dominated, such as politics, sport, or conflict zones, add to the difficulty for journalists of dealing with this. Women are most frequently harassed by sources or by male colleagues, managers and mentors and, increasingly, as we'll discuss shortly, by members of the public. Most do not report it for fear of reprisal or that it would damage their career, an entirely reasonable assumption that's borne out by the evidence. Indeed, a study by the US Equal Opportunities Commission found that 75% of women who reported harassment faced some form of retaliation. In journalism, this might mean being taken off the story, disadvantaged in pursuing other leads, or mocked or vilified for not being tough enough.